you saw in my last video, you will have seen that I created a 1830s bodice and I was going to go on to making the skirt, but the problem is my laptop died. And so I have decided to kind of hold off on the big project right now and move on to a more simpler project, which actually you probably have seen in the background of making this project. <laughs> For this video, you will see me sew and review McCall's 7952, and I believe I'm going to do C. I was in the mood to work with linen, and I've picked out this lovely yellow uh, shell fabric that kind of reminded me of Melody from The Little Mermaid 2, which, um, I, I wouldn't call it an obsession. I call it passion, and I just like to make things that remind me of things that I like. And I really like The Little Mermaid and The Little Mermaid too, so that's why I'm doing this yet another Little Mermaid themed video on this channel. Okay. So anyway, I picked this fabric from Joann's and apparently this pattern is something that you can actually get custom printed onto fabrics. And I got the linen one and it was on clearance. Um, and I've already made a pretty big mistake. So I thought that it was required for all fabrics, except for like maybe the fancy ones like satin or like, you know, all the bridal fabrics that you should pre-wash and like, you know, pre-dry the fabric so that way it can like shrink up and then it'll be easier to work with. But, uh, I've washed this linen and, um, I did not know that linen gets softer and that it kind of like misshapes and stuff so um this is what i'm working with so yes i think in the future if i'm ever going to work with linen again i'm probably not going to wash it or at least wash it but then line dry it so that way hopefully it's not it doesn't like shrink up and like become misshapen as i just said another mistake that i have made and i have learned this in the previous video do not cut out the darts for the boob area, okay? I, like, okay, I, I, I feel bad, but I cut this fabric before working on the Little Mermaid project, and it's been sitting here for months, and I just feel really bad about it, and I feel finally motivated to do this, but yes, next time, I'm just gonna leave this open, and I'm gonna draw a triangle where the line is, so that way, I can actually adjust it and, you know, do fittings and stuff. So yeah, don't do what I did. Another thing I should mention is that the last time I reviewed a McCall's pattern, it was for the skeleton baby doll dress, and I said that the dress was way, way, way too big for me, and I made a lot of mistakes, and I finally learned about it since then. So back then, I was basing all the measurements based off of their body measurements, so like, I'm a 33 inch bust, I'm a 26 inch waist, so I would... I would choose like 10 or 12 and make the adjustments as needed because I figured it was better to cut the patterns out big and then just go small rather than small to big because you can't, I mean, once you lose it, you can't use it. So, but I have since learned how to read everything. So the reason that a lot of things were misproportioned is because I didn't know what seam allowance to do and I didn't know where it was, but it's written under the sewing information right here under this key. It says seam allowances. 5 eighths inch. And also, now this is just me, okay? I was still learning, but it says finished garment measurements. And then underneath the numbers, it says what the finished garment is supposed to measure up to. So, I'm a 33 inch bust. And according to this, I was supposed to cut it out for a size 8. But instead, I cut it for a size 10. But that's okay. I'm gonna do a 5 eighths inch seam allowance where it says to. And I think we should be good. Oh yeah, I also didn't notice that it says it right here. This is the bust measurements as well. So again, I just like to say I'm really sorry about that misinformation, but you know, we're all learning here and it's, I, I just gotta learn to read. Now the next step according to this is to reinforce and pivot the circle, which I don't quite understand. I don't really, I don't really know why it wants me to do that, but I might just do that. But anyway, the next step is to stitch the darts in the front. So that's what I'm gonna do. Before all of that though, I had to iron on the interfacing. And this involved taking a damp cloth and ironing over the pattern pieces so that way they'd stick together. Then I proceeded to sew the darts and the bodice pieces together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And no, I do not believe I will ever master the art of pattern matching. 
Then I pressed all the seams flat and attached the uninterfaced collar to the outside of the bodice before attaching the interfaced piece inside of that as a lining. I hope I'm explaining that clearly. <laughs> and afterwards I ironed down the collar flat and so that way the seams would fold under and that way I can just sew it down by hand. I used a ladder stitch just sew this shut and that way you can't see it on the inside or the outside and if you're interested more on that stitch I actually made a video on it. I actually already held this up to myself and the darts are a little bit weird and I'm not going to lie one seems pointier than the other but I'm going to figure out why that is later. So the next step is to handle the shoulder straps which already I feel very weird about. Just looking at the instructions, I'm already confused because, okay, so the ones that are not interfaced, you put those ones on first, and then right side to right side, you put the interfaced shoulder straps on top of it, pull it inside out, and then it just says to, like, trim it? But then it doesn't really tell me when I'm supposed to close it off, or maybe I'm gonna, like, worry about that later, or unless, I mean... Oh wait, that's why it, you, you sew it shut on the outside, but then you don't sew it here, so that way you can flip it out, and then you, <sighs> I had to redo this band because I wasn't really doing it that well and I was kind of stupid, but this visualization should help you. So originally what I was doing was matching up these seams together like this and then trying to pin it down here and then up here. But well, what I didn't realize was that once I pinned this down and because it's a, or once I laid this down, sorry, and realized that there was a 5 eighths inch seam allowance, I was like, wait, wait. And then if you pin it here, then you end up sewing it here, and then, oh, then it will match up. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> I hope this visualization is better than my, um, my words, honestly. Next, it was time to sew the straps together, then flip them right sides out, which, as you will see, proved to be quite a challenge. It's <laughs> a lot more difficult than it looks. Did it. So I see that when I sewed along here, I was supposed to leave a gap in between the holes right there, but I didn't do that because I saw over here, this is when you actually insert it through that gap, the straps, like you cross it over, then you insert in them, and then I guess you sew it over. But um, I didn't do that because I know that um, I have a lot of problem with straps when it comes to like garments and such. So I think I'm just going to like just pin it and then try it on and just repeat itself until I think I'm ready to finally stitch down. The next couple steps of the project are already confusing me. So I see that it wants me to focus on the waistband, which I have here, and I have already ironed on the interfacing crookedly. I see that, but it's okay. I'm going to cut it off. And then I believe it wants me to add the lining, which I have here. But the way it's asking me to do it is kind of weird. So I can see this, you know, pin it right sides together and then like turn it up and trim it and then I guess add the lining but I don't know something about this instructions is just making it like weird to me because it says facing and yet it asked me to put the interfacing on the waistband before unless it wanted me to interface the lining instead of the fabric. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to do what feels right. Actually, sometimes you shouldn't do what feels right because this is what happened next. Do you ever like go forth in the project thinking that you read everything through and that you're doing the right thing and you thought of every single possible outcomes to what you're doing? Well, I was in the middle of hand stitching the top because I thought, yeah, if I want this to be done, I need to finish both of the edges because I sewed the bottom edge, but then I was finishing the upper edge because I wanted it to look clean. 
completely forgetting that a skirt is coming. So I'm gonna undo all those stitches, do what I think the instructions were trying to explain to me, and stitch this part right over that. And then once I attach the skirt to the bottom of this, then I do what I was doing and like hand sew the seams inside. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Learn from my mistakes, again. So I sat down and felt bad for a little while, but this is exactly what seam rippers are for, ladies and gents. Then I moved on to the fun part of this project, which was making the pleats. Yes, I know, I said I was gonna do gathers at the start, but I changed my mind, okay? I used the pattern pieces as a guide and it turned out a lot better than I thought it would. I then sewed a basting stitch across the top of the skirt pieces by machine before ironing everything flat. On to the next couple of steps, and for my visual learners, I hope that what I am about to explain to you does the trick. So, pockets. We all love pockets, right, on this channel? We've known that before. And so, uh, the steps are to attach them right sides to right sides on the front, as well as the back. For But, however, for the back, I was about to get confused, but then I set this up and I am going to try to explain this to the best of my ability. That crack was my ankle. So you see how on the front I made it so that way the pleats, this is the center, on the right side it goes on the right and then on the left side it goes to the left. Well I wanted it to follow all the way through to the back so what I did was that I attached the pockets as normal and then for the back panels, I set it so that way I could visualize it. So on the right side, every all the pleats are going that way. And then on the, on the back, all the pleats are following through. So that way, when you sew them together and you lay them flat, they all the pleats are going in the same direction. And then the same way for the other side. So all the pleats are going to the left and then where is it? <laughs> okay, here we go. And then in the back, all of the pleats are going to the right. Well, at least in this perspective, they're going to the right. And then when you flip them over, they're all pointing in that direction. They're all being folded in that direction. So what this means is that uh, once you figure those out together, place the pocket to that side on the edge that also has the pocket. So that way, you can uh, do it in an invisible pocket, which I have done on this channel before. But basically the next steps, I think it's, it's what gonna tell me. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, okay, I'm just getting really excited. Is that we sew it all the way around the edges, so that way when you tuck this on the inside, I just lost a pin, that's okay. That way it will look like an invisible pocket because that way all the right side of the fabrics are on the outside. So yeah, and you're about to see me uh, do one of my favorite sewing things, which is sew on pockets. So how I sew an invisible pocket goes as such. I pinned the pocket pieces to the right sides of the fabric and then sewed them down. And then I ironed the seams so that way they face towards the pockets. And this one trick I do to ensure that the opening is neat and crisp is that I sandwich them together and then I pin the sections together so that way I can see what it's like on the outside and so they won't mess up as I sew around the pockets and I sew the skirt pieces together. And of course, I use lots and lots of pins. Finally, I sewed across the top of the pocket so that way it'd stay in place on the skirt and it's done. The pockets, I mean, not the dress. I mean, I, I have a lot more to do. To hem the skirt, I measured the skirt to the length that I wanted and I folded the hem up by a little over an inch and then I pinned it so that way the raw edge was encased in the overlap. Or should I say underlap because it's under that. You know what, it's hard to explain, guys. When you just finished hemming and you realize that you 
you're pointing all of your pins the wrong way. That's fine because I'm just going to follow the instructions. I think what it wants me to do is that it wants me to sew it right along this fold and then fold this top part over and then just sew it along there as well. Um, I can, the, the diagram is kind of weird because it's like, it's suggesting hand sewing, but it's not telling me to, but I don't have a lining, so I don't see the point in doing that when you're going to see it anyway, but, um, I think for this project, I don't care. So I think I'm going to just have, um, fun just kind of do, hemming this a different way. And... You know, what crossroads do I have to meet, like, a demon or something just so I can sell my soul so that way I can just look down and be like, oh, that's perfect. It's perfect. Then it was time to focus on the sides of the skirt, and this involved ironing one side of the seams inward before folding the strap over right sides to right side like hot dog style, and then sewing it together so that way I could flip it out and it'd have a clean edge. I attached each piece starting from the hem to the sides of the skirt and tried a new method of closing off the outer seam, which I will try to explain now. Now you probably wouldn't do this because this is actually way far out, way like more far out than it has to be. Uh, but what I did was because I was deciding which side I wanted to do, so I ironed it in anyway. And by the way, I now have a reason why I should never use interfacing again. And it's because when you try to iron it again, it fights you. So what I'm going to do is try this. I got this foot and I think this is for when you are uh, stitching in the ditch and I have never done it before, but I believe it's going to help me out in this instance. I think what I want to do is just try it out. Now I know I'm exaggerating it, but I don't care what it looks on the inside, only I'm going to see it. It became a bit of a challenge, but when done neatly, stitching in the ditch saves a lot of time. So it caught on a little bit because I didn't iron it like quite correctly, but I, I don't care. I don't really care. It looks, it looks good. It looks good. And because I'm making this by hand, that just makes it all the more special. Now it's time to chop these off and then worry about the bodice again. It was at this point when I realized that the backs did not match up at all. So in order to fix that, and because I also understood that the skirt overlaps with a bunch of buttons, yeah, no zippers apparently, um, it's supposed to overlap like that. I believe what I ended up doing was that I found the center seam and then I cut it so that way one is just a bit longer than the other. Also so that way it looks even just when you lay the tops flat next to each other. So what I'm going to do is um, just even out the seam a little bit, just so it's a little bit more gradual in the back, just so it looks like it's supposed to be that way. And then if it turns out bad, I don't care. Because you see, I kind of enjoy making these as sort of like fancy mock-ups, so that way you can see whether or not the instructions were really well written out or not, or if it actually is easy, because McCall's, McCall's. Some of your patterns aren't easy, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you. And also afterwards, I'm going to uh, <laughs> not panic this time. And if it needs more pleats, I'm just gonna add more pleats in the back so that way it's a little bit more fancier. Okay, then how did this side come out perfect and the other side didn't? I don't get it. I was about to sew the bodice to the skirt, but the universe said no. No way. Oh no. <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh Lord, help me. I don't, I have no light. Wait, 
Wait. What? Oh. I love how I'm, as you can see, I am pinning, um, the, um, <laughs> skirt. Um. Something in this universe does not want me to sew today. I'll be right back. Update, there is a tornado warning in my area and um, this dress is just gonna have to wait. I may be in the safest part of the <laughs> my house, but I'm, I'm not trusting it. You ever go through your hobbies and think, this simply isn't dangerous enough for me? Wow. This actually came out quite good. I should have ironed it, but it's going to be in the back, so I don't care. By the way, I didn't really bother to finish off this edge. I normally would just like whip stitch it so that way it was closed shut, kind of like how these are, like so it would look like that. But I just really can't be bothered right now. I got to get this done. I have other deadlines to do. I stitched in the ditch again, and if you decide to try this out too, just remember to fold the fabric over just enough so that way the needle can catch it as you're sewing just over the ditch of the seam on the outside of the fabric. I hope this makes sense. And it's really hard because it's like you're sewing like over it. You can't see where you're actually going. You're just kind of hoping and praying that you're going to catch the fabric that you're hoping to seal off. But yeah, this is hard to explain concisely. I'm sorry, but I hope the visuals help. Yay! It's crooked, but yay! <laughs> I'm sure that every seamstress has come across this problem before, but I am at the point where I have too many projects to deal with because it is August now, spooky season is coming, the Ren Fest is coming, and I just have too much on my plate to think about finishing this. So while I talked about how this pattern was kind of a little bit confusing for me, it didn't talk about all of the details, especially about the closure, and also, this pattern has proven to be a bit too small for me, but there are a couple ways I can fix it. I have a corset, but that's kind of the easy way out if I really wanted to go with the buttons, or if I find a zipper that's long enough, I could... God damn it! Right now, I'm just not really in the mood to finish this project, and sometimes it just gets like that. And as I was saying before, um, I have this to worry about. I plan on being Ichabod's mother from Sleepy Hollow, the Tim Burton version. The Renfest is fast approaching, and I have about three weeks to finish this next project, and, well, my costume is already done. I'm going as my D&D character, Sakura Puakai, level 15 elf wizard. However, my boyfriend doesn't have a costume at all. And with that, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. <laughs> so I really hope to see you in the next video, and I shall see you in my next sewing adventure. Again, really sorry I didn't finish it. But hey, I will finish this one. I promise. It's just I'm a working woman. I, I don't have that much time on my hands.